What's going on everybody? How you doing tonight? Just doing the doing the share thing right now. Hey Barb, how you doing? Oh no, I already said that. No, oh, no rings yet. Sean White has shared your post. Copy link. There we go. Okay, now where we're we gonna go? Over here. making you crazy I'll bet started all right no rings yet it's making you crazy I can appreciate that I always hated waiting for rings but it was better than it was better than making my own all right where there where are the rings I need we'll get to that those pieces making you crazy gonna become a crazy person I don't blame you all right what do I want yeah ah, don't go everywhere I like using bags to hold my rings, but it really is kind of a terrible idea. Not the worst idea, but I have other containers that I like to put stuff in. You can't make your own rings. I won't make my own rings, right? So one of my first couple of projects was like a European six-in-one shirt had a galvanized steel um, fence wire from Home Depot. And man, oh man, I wrapped and hand cut all those rings, and I said no more. Once I once I found the ring lord, it was over for me. I will I will not be making my own rings. There is simply no way. Right. All right. Put a couple more rings on this bottom edge here. <coughs> so here, where are we at? One, two, three, four, five. Five more, maybe? We won't, we'll have to make the rest of this patch in order for it to, 
in order to be sure on that count, but about five more rings on this bottom edge here should do the trick. And we'll fill it in. Oh, I hear my dog barking. I got a little Chihuahua Beagle Street Dog. That, how old is he now? He's seven or eight years old at this point. He's, he's a good little dog. He's, it's like a little heater. But man, does he bark. I think one more should do the trick here. I don't even want to recount the hours wasted making a bunch of really crappy rings for a project that had I known what I know now I never would have started you know which kind of why we're here chainmail has evolved beyond armor a lot And, you know, there's not really a limit to what you can make with it. So I think a wine bottle holster is a pretty cool thing to make with it, personally. Come on, get What in the world? I've got a hair stuck to me. I don't think it's my hair. It probably was. I don't know. No one else is down here but me, so. I can't really uh, accuse anyone else of shedding on my desk. So how is everyone's day? What have you guys been up to? I get to do some family teaching today for a client. Which reminds me, I probably should have called him. Actually, no. We'll do that later. I actually have, I gotta send something out. And I keep forgetting to do it. So, Did some patient uh, family teaching. That went well. And then uh, I got some more work done on the computer. That went pretty well. And now I'm here. I gotta start dedicating like chunks of time to a couple other things, a couple bigger projects I gotta get done around here. But, you know, slowly but surely, we'll get there. And one day we'll be all caught up and we won't have anything to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Er. trying to think of all the things like I cut I hand cut a lot of rings all right and I'm trying to think of all the things I made with it I made my first attempt at a bikini which ended up being lined in leather and trimmed with rabbit fur and it was pretty cool looking I would definitely call it a success but uh, 
I would definitely not ever do it again out of galvanized steel. Right? It's one of those live and learn things. I was very, very young. What's up, David? Project's going great, man. Got through a bunch of roadblocks and... You know, things are moving along finally. So hopefully we'll finish up the top portion tonight and get some work done on the bottom portion that we need to finish up. And if we don't run into any other roadblocks, knock on wood, um, we will, uh, hopefully finish this up here soon. Yeah, we're, we're still working on it. Still going. We have probably a solid 15 hours into this, right? And of those, probably six hours was spent tearing it apart and putting it back together. So if it was, by the time we're done, we probably have three or four more hours to go. Um, so by the time we're done, we'll we'll probably have like 15 or 16 solid working hours on it. So, which in the end, the way it looks right now, I think it'll be worth it. YouTube is better than Facebook. Yeah, we're going with leather. If you look at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash mailworks, M-A-I-L-L-E-W-E-R-X, there are some work in progress photos of the leather strap going through the top portion of what we've got done here. to kind of give people an idea of how it's going to be pieced together. So it was kind of a proof of concept picture, which I thought was cool. Picture is clearer and you can see better what you're doing. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Because that's what we use for, we, uh, we take the videos off of YouTube and embed them into uh, the website, right? So hopefully it's nice and clear. And hopefully that'll all you know, just get better as time goes on as we get better equipment and more lights and all that fun stuff. Are you subscribed on YouTube, Barb? You should subscribe if you haven't already because I need more subscribers over there. I don't think I have. I might have one. It might just be you already. I don't know. Do you have to get up to like a thousand before you can really do anything with your YouTube channel? 
Maybe one day. How much does Pepsi cost in my country? I have no idea. Like, for a 16 ounce bottle, it's probably like two bucks. I don't drink it, so. That is a guess. Awesome, thank you, Barb. Come on. I think I think the average, you know, sixteen ounce of soda is like two bucks. It's always cheaper to just go to the fountain, so I prefer it from the fountain, personally. Not Pepsi, but soda when I do have one. New country they had a tax for sugar and Pepsi, 700 mil cost ten dollars. Wow. I would stop drinking Pepsi immediately. That's ridiculous. Like that's just absolutely nuts. Ten dollars for a soda. Thank you for the follow, Sniper Schnitzel. Sniper Schnitzel. <laughs> That's a fun name to say. Yeah, for $10, they can kiss me there, too. There's no way. Let's do this, I think. Move the camera forward a little bit. Excuse me. Yep. I think uh, they have like a sugar tax of some kind in Chicago where all the soda there is like 50% more than everywhere else in Dane County. They're ridiculous, though, about everything. They have ridiculous taxes on anything you purchase there, so. It's a quite, it's a silly place. Hmm, Kenty is now following. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for being here. How are you? What's going on? We're making some chain mail. Trying to finish up this project. So here, I'll, I'll finish up uh, these next couple rows and then I'll I'll give you a, like an update on where it's at. You stay away from Chicago unless you gotta. You have to go. You're three hour, three hours west of there. Yeah, it's 45 minutes to an hour south of me. So I drive by it a lot. I definitely don't stop there. Right? Like I've been down to the aquarium. I've been downtown. I've seen Blue Man Group, and I'm. That's good enough for me. You know, there's really not a lot that Chicago has to offer. So, what's up, Josh? How you doing, buddy? No, I'm, I'm in Kenosha. Urgh. Don't grab that ring. Grab that. There you go. Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's another undesirable place. I am, uh, like, I liked San Antonio, Texas, while I was there. I liked Boise, Idaho, 
when I was there. There are things I like about cities, you know? But I'm not a fan of the Midwest here. You're in the Moline Rock Island area of Illinois on Iowa border out in I-80. Yeah, you're, you're out there. I'm doing all right, Josh. Doing all right. Got some... Uh, Got some stuff done today. It's always, you know, two steps forward, one step back, but things do move ahead as long as you put effort on them, I think. So, getting ready for the weekend. I've got a I've got some stuff I have to do, right? One is a light install. And I want to go and do one more. The The lights on the back side of our house went out. And it's been back there for 15 years now. And so it's all chewed up and it looks terrible. Um... Where am I at here? So I want to replace the whole thing. I don't need to. I could just I could just replace the bulbs, right? But I'd like to replace the whole thing to make it look nicer. So I don't particularly like that light in the first place because it's it's too low, it's like a spotlight, right? So if you're on the deck and you turn around and look at this house, there's this giant spotlight shining down on you. And if you're looking out at the yard, it's great because you can see most of the yard. It's like a big floodlight. But for, you know, if you're ever hanging out in the evening on the deck, it just doesn't work. So I want to tear the whole deck out anyway. Come on. Because that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry about the abuse to the audience there. Knocking stuff around. I don't think I'll get to the deck this summer, so I'm just going to have to be satisfied with changing out the light. these in here I don't know if I'll get to that this weekend but definitely got to get stuff done around here this weekend for sure So I've got too many things that have just been sitting around that waiting to get done, you know. But I am ready for the weekend. It hasn't been a terrible week or anything. I'm just, you know, I just want to chill and hang out. So I've been one of the one of the things I used to do is I used to go and get home from work, and I would, uh, I was still like really new and learning my job and everything, so I would spend a lot of time charting, but I've gotten much faster and I'm doing much better, so I have time to do other things. So I would, uh, I would get home and I'd have this time to do other things and then I wouldn't know what to do with myself because I wasn't used to having time. And it would just get away from me. So I'm trying to avoid letting my time slip through the cracks. Right? Like, get up at 6, make kids lunch, get them fed, take care of the dogs. Right? Go to a work meeting at 8. And, uh,. I am generally at my first patient's house by 8.45 or 9. And from there until about 1.30, 2 o'clock, I'm out seeing patients. When I get home, you're thinking about shipping 20 liters of Pepsi? 
Yeah, at ten dollars a bottle, I would order it from someone else, somewhere else, if you could get it. So pick up the kid, then it's dinner time, and generally between when I get home from work and picking up the kid and dinner time, I have about an hour in there with which it is undetermined, you know, what I need to be doing, you know. Like, I, I can do whatever I want during that time. David, I don't know what uh, country you live in, um, but once upon a time, I drove from Fort Polk, Louisiana to Houston, Texas. Uh, well, Beaumont. I think it was Beaumont, Texas, which is just across the border. But it was like, it was a couple hour drive, right? To get as much fat tire beer as I could find my hands on. Fat tire is a brand of beer made in uh, Colorado. And I packed up, I cleared out uh, like two stores, packed up my car and drove across state lines. So if you got to pay $10 for 750, uh, you live in Poland. So it's like, yeah, it's like 45 minutes to the next country, right? Half an hour, maybe. So, I would I would definitely uh, be considering hopping on the autobahn um, out there, whatever the main roads are. And if you truly love Pepsi that much, twenty minutes to Ukraine and Belarus. That's cool. Do they check do they check your vehicle for like contraband Pepsi as you go across the border? Uh, yeah, I, I drove to Beaumont. I filled up my car, which if you've never had fat tire, it's it's good. A little hoppy, tastes like pine needles. You have a five liter limit plus a Visa. Interesting. We don't have that down here, so. Or at least I didn't down in Louisiana. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed Fat Tire a lot because uh, I worked for a distributor company a long time ago when I was a teenager that distributed all the water and juice and micro brews for the area that I lived in. And Fat Tire was one of the, one of the drinks we delivered to various various uh, stores around the area. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to take those last two rings out. Come in. Come here. Ugh. And then I got very drunk that night. It was a good time. There's not a lot to do in Louisiana. You like Fat Tire, but Miss San Miguel from the Philippines, 12% alcohol. Nice. All right, let's see here. Where's our strap here? Okay, so we have this top part's done, right? So I'm gonna give you, a, show you what this is gonna look like on the bottle. Once I get this leather strap through here. Come on. It's probably good enough right there. Now, the leather band is through here, right? You can see it 
comes out on either side we'll put a, a rivet in there and this will go up to a belt loop type deal okay. and then it'll hang like so roughly and then we gotta just do that to the bottom so I like how this came out right and we'll probably put some black dye on this <coughs> Excuse me, I think this is a great way to figure out how to um, connect leather to chain mail, right? Like I've done, I've done it where I've used like a strip of leather, put some hole punches on the edge, punch some holes along the edge, and then used uh, leather cord to do some decorative knot work to tie them together. <laughs> And now here's here's another one that I think that you know I think it turned out pretty good if I do say so myself. Normal beer the states is only five or six and pulling it's eight to fourteen. Minimum vodka is forty. Yeah. Yep. In Utah, their beer is only three percent, which is interesting. It's like. I don't know if there's a point to drinking 3% beer, like, if there's nothing else, I guess, you know. All right, well, I guess we can start getting worked, work done on the bottom now. Lots of people say here, vine is not alcohol. Yeah, in those European countries, don't you guys start drinking when you're like, born? Isn't that kind of the general rule? You have a shot glass that says eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow, you could be in Utah. <laughs> oh, I might want to put the camera back down to where we need it to be so that you can actually see what I'm working on. That would be helpful. Better than smacking the camera around. For tomorrow, you could be in Utah. Come on. If you've never been to Utah, you should definitely go. Utah has some of the most amazing natural monuments in the world. Bryce, Zion, and Arches National Parks are amazing. And those are right around Moab, Utah. At least Arches is. I'm not sure how far off Bryce and Zion is. No, only Slav countries drink this much. So it's only only like uh, Slavic countries that you start uh, <laughs> you get this in the DNA. Only in Slavic countries where you start drinking as a as a small infant. So I'm pretty sure they give that to you to inoculate you from all the diseases we give kids shots for over here. I'm just kidding. Don't don't give your babies alcohol. It's not that is not my medical professional opinion. I don't need someone coming back. But you said on stream to give your baby alcohol. 
to keep it from getting sick. The last thing I need is a litiga litigation case over something like that. Oh. All right. So we got to patch up this bottom piece here. I think that was from when we, maybe it was from when we expanded it out, um, or maybe it was from when I may have had to tear some rings out of this bottom band. I don't remember why. There's so much tearing this apart and putting it back together, you know? Your friend's parents went to their friends and there were four of them and they drank six bottles of vodka. Whew, that sounds like a bad day the next day. One liter button. Yeah, no. No, thank you. It's like, I don't mind having a drink now and then, but that's... That just makes me hurt. It's a sign of my age, I guess. An old wise remedy for teething babies, a little whiskey on their gums. No, that's, you know, I mean, I think that's pretty common. Right? Oh, and I'm pretty sure it worked. Or works, right? But, uh, okay, we gotta, we gotta line these up, kind of. Okay, that goes in the bottom two. Because we want this to match up. They were normal the next day, like nothing just happened. Yeah. Ugh. Their livers are stronger than mine. Like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've done my share of drinking, but it's just like. I've done, I've had my share of hangovers too. Your grandfather used to make homemade cough syrup with whiskey, garlic, onion, lemon, and not one piece of that stuff could bring you back from the dead. Yeah, I believe it. Whiskey, garlic, onion, lemon. I'm sure that would clear you right up. I think I'm gonna try that. Remind me next time I'm on here and I've got the sniffles or something to go try that. I don't have any whiskey in the house right now, but might just have to go to the gas station or the grocery store for that. Don't ask you how your parents were still walking after that. Yeah, yeah. I think if I tried to drink that much now, I would die. I would. I know I would hurt the next day if I drank that much, so I would definitely want to die. You mix it all in a bottle and just put it in the freezer. Nice. My grandmother had this thing where she would put witch hazel on all your wounds. Which I guess is some kind of disinfectant, but like most people just use alcohol. Or, ne you know, they wash it with soap and water and put some neosporin on it. But we always got witch hazel for some reason which I guess you can still buy it's like I don't think it stains I'm trying to think of what other home remedies we had all from all from my grandma
Hi Tara, how are you? Your grandma used a poultice of warm milk and white bread to heal open wounds? Really? It's interesting. Does it work? Never heard of warm milk and white bread. Oh yeah, it worked. We're still breathing. That's good. It's good to hear. Come on. Why is this jumping the ring? Get in there. Go where I tell you to go, ring. With as much trouble as this uh, wine bottle holster caused me, right? I sure am glad that we got the opportunity to make it because it really did. It got through a lot of rings that I had lying around. Worked awesome on infections. Some of the old, old remedies are better than the stuff they give you nowadays. It can be, yeah. There's a lot of homeopathic remedies that work well. A lot of it's a lot of it's bubkis, but uh, some of it does indeed work. You know, as a species. I don't know how many thousands of years we survived, but you know, well, we've done pretty well and modern medicine's only been around for the last, what, 200 years? Germ theory's only 150 years old? 1850s, 1750s? Right, so I mean, people had to figure out some, some of the stuff that people figured out had to work a little bit, you know? I don't recommend trepanning, you know, from the Aztec culture. That seems a little extreme. You know, where they drill a hole in your head. It's not one of my uh, recommended homeo homeopathic remedies, but... Do I have a dehumidifier in my basement? No might help with my cough. My cough is largely from allergies. I am okay. It's not really it's not really damp down here. There is some moisture cuz the law the washer and dryer are down here but It's like I have all my chainmail projects lying around out here and you know they haven't rusted or anything but but thank you for your concern. I will uh, take it into consideration maybe we do need one down here that thought has never crossed my mind Barb, are you still watching? I was wondering if you knew of this Canadian singer that I am a fan of. Do you guys have you guys ever heard of Stan Rogers? 
sing songs like uh, the Genie C and uh, oh, what is the other one? Um, now, now of course I forget the name of uh, Stan Rogers. You haven't? Okay. He was a Canadian singer. Um, he's got he's got quite the collection of stuff. He died. He ended up dying very young in a fire on a plane that was still on the tarmac. He did not get out. Um, yeah, Stan Rogers. All right, David. Have a good one. Thank you. Um. Anyway, I was thinking about him the other day, and then I was listening to some of his music, and I was like, oh, Barb's in Canada. Maybe she knows who he is. It's okay. It's okay if you don't. Don't feel bad if you don't. It's. It was just a question. Just a thought. One of those things that I've been meaning to ask you for like three weeks now. And of course I never think about it while I'm streaming, so. I don't know what kind of music you like, but I like his music and uh, it's about ships and you know, sailing and it's got a some other like acapella men's group stuff that he did. One of the artists my dad um, shared with me when I was much younger. My dad liked to go. There used to be. Uh, well, I'm sure the it's still there. It's a Barnes and Nobles in our town, and you could go and like listen to sample music for free. So my dad would go and just listen to a bunch of random stuff, and then buy all these uh, very uh, acquired tastes. Um, CDs. And then he had like a. He had the, I don't know what they're called, the old school speakers of like wood paneling on the side and you know, they're they're enormous and they sit in the corner of a room and like my dad had them hooked up to a five disc CD changer and a record player and you're not really into newer Canadian music. You love Great Big Sea and a lot of country. Well, this guy, um, yes, he did a lot of sea shanties. Um, like Barrett's Pirateers. Thank you, Tara. Barrett's Privateers. Pirateers? I don't know. Um, and I think he died in the early 80s. So he's not, he's not new by any means. Um, I don't know. Maybe you'll hear something be like, oh yeah, of course I know who he is. Everyone in Canada knows who he is. Canadian folk singer. Now you have to look him up. It's you know it's it's good stuff. It's just folk music and sea shanties. Songs about like whaling and fishing and ships and there's a lot of that in there.
Yep, something, something, Halifax Pier. There's a couple other songs that he did that were real good. One song's about a girl, she sleeps with this sailor and then she gets knocked up and she tells she tells the sailor they can't be together because what would the neighbors think or what would her family think or something and then she gets more and more pregnant or no 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 before she gets pregnant the sailor's like wants to marry her right and they go off and do the dirty deed and then she ends up pregnant and the sailor's of course off sailing a ship and he comes home right after she had rejected him he comes home and she's got this baby and he's like yeah nope you rejected me too bad it's all about being careful who, who you love you grew up and loved Stomping Tom Connors. Is that a Canadian musician? Bowser and the Blue wrote the rodeo song. Oh yeah, man. holy crap, it's been 52 minutes already. Tom flies when you're having fun. Jessica Julian, thank you for liking the stream. Appreciate you hanging out tonight. Just making some chain mail. Having a blast. Alright. You love the rodeo song? Bowser in the Blue and the rodeo song. Let's look that up. A Newfoundland sailor when walking on the strand. He spied a pretty fair young maid and took her by the hand. All right, come on. You sing that all the time, you and your siblings, just because it pissed your dad off? Nice. <clears throat> I know nothing else of Canadian music, except that Stan Rogers was Canadian. You dare me to look up the rodeo song? Okay. Stan is perfect chainmail music. I agree. I've listened to a bunch of his stuff a lot over the years. the weekend I think we should try and finish this this weekend like the chainmail portion of it right I don't know if that's possible because it's like see your Friday Saturday Sunday that's three hours minimum if we're not doing anything else here at the house <laughs> right I think I think we could do the rest of this in three hours we got this Second layer of uh, European four and one here, and the bottom. Uh, 
and it, it really is just some leather straps some rivets some buttons some dye you know maybe we'll find a way to texture the straps do I know what my next no I have no idea I have no idea I what's the word It will be I don't know. Oh, I was looking for a project and it's way over across the other side of the room. I have some inlays that I need to do. Right? And these are old projects that I have needed to finish for years that I just never got around to. Um, because of one reason or another, right? Oh, we're almost, almost all the way around on this top row here. Eventually do an inline. Don't ask me for advice. I made some really poor decisions early on that delayed me being um, better at chainmail than I am today. Uh, like I'm, I'm okay, you know, but I, I could have been this good a long time ago, right? Um, and yeah, so I decided to do European six in one inlays with uh, quarter inch rings. This this size of ring, right? And it's not a terrible size to do it in, um, but it's not the best from my uh, experience now, right? I would I would highly recommend like 18 gauge 532nd rings for an inlay. We are working on this row of rings right here. We gotta do the second layer of Euro 4 and 1 and it's coming along. This on top, like I just love the way, how how smooth the transition is, right? I really do think that that is just neat. And, I, and you got some texture in here. I like it, I like it a lot. So, all right. Um, it's 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 been an hour now. Oh, and I do have some stuff to do. I gotta get up early and go to work tomorrow. So thank you to everyone for hanging out. If you uh, want to see more chainmail streams, you can always help support the channel by purchasing something from mailworks.com and uh, I will probably be on tomorrow night or uh, Saturday at the latest I don't think I have anything going on this weekend and so we will we will work on getting this done and then we'll Excuse me. And then we'll figure out what our next project is going to be. So we will be done with this probably in the next week. If not this weekend. 
so. I like it. I like it a lot. I like the way it's come out. Despite all the roadblocks and everything, this is this is turning into quite the piece. Alright, so you guys have a wonderful night, and I will talk to you later.